Good food choices and balanced nutrition keep us alive, happy, and energized, while poor food choices are the major cause of many chronic diseases, such as obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, inflammatory disorders, and some types of cancer. However, foods that are good for one person might not be good for another. This difference is due to human metabolic individuality. Throughout human history, food and nutrient availability varied in different regions and time periods. This variability may have led to genetic mutation and adoption, especially in genes responsible for nutrient absorption, biosynthesis, transportation, and metabolism. For example, people descended from hunter-gatherer tribes might have genetics better suited for high-protein and high-fat foods, while people descended from farming regions might have been selected for eating grain-rich foods. One good example to illustrate gene-food interaction is the presence of genetic polymorphism in a locus of chromosome 11, which encodes the FADS1 gene. The FADS1 gene controls the biosynthesis of very long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, such as omega-3 EPA and omega-6 AA. Studies on population genetics have shown that the frequency of FADS1 gene variations differ across geographic regions and ethnic groups. The C allele is predominant in Native American populations and prevalent in East Asia and Oceania, while the A allele is most common in people with African ancestry and also prevalent in people with European ancestry. This distribution may reflect genetic adoption to the unique food environments, selection pressures, and cultural and culinary practices in these regions. One factor could have been what types of foods were available to provide EPA and AA. People can get EPA and AA directly from animal foods such as egg yolks, whole milk, and fish or they can synthesize them from plant oils, such as flax, canola, and olive. The process of converting plant oil precursors to EPA and AA requires three enzymes. Among them, FADS1 is the rate-limiting enzyme in this process. The genotypes of the FADS1 gene strongly influence a person's ability to convert plant oils to EPA and AA. A person with A alleles is an excellent converter and can rely solely on plant oils to get sufficient EPA and AA. In contrast, a person with C alleles is a poor converter and needs to eat more animal fats to get sufficient EPA and AA. EPA and AA and their metabolites, eicosanoids, exert complex control over many systems and processes in the body, including nutritional homeostasis, cardiovascular function, inflammation, the central nervous system, bone formation, and reproduction. Deficiency, excess, or imbalance of these fatty acids will lead to health problems. Numerous studies have confirmed that EPA and AA levels are lower in people who are genetically low converters. These people are at increased risk of hypertriglyceridemia, type 2 diabetes, and metabolic syndromes. The frequency of the low converter allele is about 97% in Native Americans, 59% in Latinos, 57% in East Asians, 35% in Caucasians, and 11% in African Americans. Indeed, in Native American and Latino populations, we see more hypertriglyceridemia, type 2 diabetes, and metabolic syndromes. EPA, AA, 
and their metabolites, the eicosanoids, act as endogenous ligands for PPARs. PPARs are a family of nuclear hormone receptors that serve as fatty acid sensors. They function to maintain nutritional homeostasis in our bodies. In a cell's nucleus, upon binding with a ligand, the PPAR protein will pair with the retinoid X receptor, RXR, a vitamin A receptor. Together, they recognize a specific DNA sequence called PPRE elements, then activate transcription of hundreds of genes to trigger an array of physiological functions. There are three major PPARs. PPAR alpha is a master regulator of nutrient metabolism in the liver. Upon binding with its ligands, PPAR alpha activates transcription of 200 to 300 genes, the majority of which are fatty acid catabolism enzymes that promote fat burning and energy production. PPAR alpha is also the molecular target for the triglyceride lowering drug Fibrate. PPAR gamma is found primarily in adipose tissue. The activation of PPAR gamma promotes adipocyte differentiation and storage of lipids, meanwhile increasing insulin sensitivity. Not surprisingly, PPAR gamma is the molecular target for the popular type 2 diabetes drug TZD. PPAR delta is ubiquitously present in all tissues but has highest expression in skeletal muscle. Activation of PPAR delta provides energy, promotes muscle remodeling, and increases endurance. PPAR delta is also the target for an exercise enhancing drug, GW1516. From this example, we can see that low converters, prevalent in Native American, Latino, and East Asian populations could end up with inadequate EPA and AA levels in their body when they don't have enough animal-sourced polyunsaturated fatty acids in their diet. This in turn could lead to insufficient activation of PPAR pathways. Prolonged deficiency would eventually impair fat utilization and energy production processes, ultimately leading to hyperlipidemia and insulin resistance. In contrast, high converters, prevalent in African-American populations, could end up with excessive AA levels if they have too much omega-6 rich plant oil in their diet. Omega-6 is pro-inflammatory and associated with increased risk for coronary artery disease. We can also see that nutrients can act on the same molecular targets as drugs and help our bodies maintain homeostasis on a daily basis. But the FADS1 gene is just one example. Many conditions and diseases can be prevented by gene-nutrition interaction. In this light, we can use foods as drugs to stop the epidemic of diet-induced chronic diseases. To do this correctly, we need precision nutrition to match genes with diet.